there are five things you really must complete whenever it comes to closing your swimming pool for the season. I've always said, and I've said many times on this channel and on my website that you don't close the pool necessarily when you quit swimming in it, but you do when the water and temperature is just right. So if it's around the time of year where you're no longer swimming in it and you think you may want to close your pool or you think it's time to, do these five things to make sure you're ready to close your pool. First thing you want to do before you close your pool is check the temperature of the water. Now you can do this by having a little thermometer in your water, which I do right here. And this one's floating. And you can see right there, it is at 68 degrees. If this thing would come a little closer. I would <laughs> possibly make it so you could see but it is showing to be 68 degrees in the water. Now, 68 degrees is way too cold to swim in, but it's still warm enough that you don't wanna close your pool because algae can still grow at 68 degrees. So the first thing you wanna do is wait till the water temperature is below 65 degrees, preferably close to around 60 degrees or less all the time, consistently, um, or the average is at least about 60 degrees. If you don't, then you go ahead and cover your pool and shut it down and just quit maintaining it, don't add chlorine, you're gonna open a green pool next season. And the next step is to go ahead and vacuum your pool. You wanna get all of the debris off the bottom of the water like you have right here. There is some in uh, here. The bottom's not the cleanest right now. Um, not too bad, but I vacuum it regularly haven't been swimming in it, so haven't been keeping it quite as clean. There's some dirt on there. Uh, so I'll be running my vacuum through it all about once a week. And then whenever it's time to close, I'll do a detailed cleaning as well. Tip or step number three. The third thing you wanna be sure you do before closing your pool is balance the water. Now this is not terribly important and I don't recommend as I did in a previous video, said you don't need a bunch of chemicals to close your pool. Get your pool temperature below 60 degrees so nothing, no algae, no bacteria can thrive in your water. You don't need to add a whole lot of stuff. Uh, but do add a bag of shock, maybe a strong shock just before you close it a day or two to kill any remaining things reminiscing in the water and you're, you're fine. Just one or two bags of shock or whatever you normally use uh, to uh, shock your swimming pool. Number four. Drain the water level below the hoses. You want to make sure that all of your hoses are water, uh, don't have any water in them. Uh, so you want to make sure you drain your water below of the skimmer so that water is no longer in your lines. You want to disconnect your pump and hose from the wall or ever how you want to do it. Put that in the garage or somewhere if you can and make sure all the water is out of all of the lines. That way whenever you get uh, an ice storm or 31 to 20 degree temperatures, the lines won't bust and you won't have repairs starting next season. So make sure the water is below the skimmer and completely out of all of the lines. Turn the lines upside down, open any areas where water can drain and let it dry out. If you have to leave it outside, be sure it's 100% dry uh, and cover it if you can somehow. I like to take my pump inside because uh, you get rain on this plastic part of this and I've had it break. I have a video of me fixing it, but this thing right here, you get water and ice on this in the winter, a uh, snow, and it can actually get real iced over and crack. And uh, you don't want to crack this lid or even this plastic thing uh, during the winter. So best just to go ahead and take it inside. And the last thing that, that's really important you want to do is cover your pool. Um, you don't want to uh, leave it uncovered for uh, squirrels and, and birds and uh, any rodents, animals, insects, and everything else to get in the pool. Uh, also, uh, it's, it'll protect your liner better. And that way, when you take the cover off, uh, you will have less work to do next season. It also will prevent all these leaves. See, back here, if you have a bunch of trees like I do, which right behind my pool, let me look at that. 
uh, when there's, there was a windstorm here recently, just within the last couple of weeks, a big old windstorm came in. And when it did, all these uh, uh, pine cone tree leaves flew all in this pool. And you can see one floating by right there. Uh, and uh, right, right there's another one. And, and they completely fill your pool up. So if you have a cover on it, at least it'll be on top of the cover and you don't have to worry too much about it getting up inside your water there. And that is just five things you need to do. But I've got an entire list of 12 you probably want to look at. If you have never closed your pool or wondering what you really should do, go to easyclearpool.com slash closing and it will give you an entire list of these five things I mentioned plus a total of 12. So seven more and you'll be able to close your pool the best way you can so that when next season comes in you'll be ready to go and just remember that uh, whenever you close your pool each year it's easyclearpool.com slash closing as a reference guide so you'll know the steps to do whenever it's time to close your pool for the winter months